This man standing behind Mze Kinyata is Wanyoike Thungu, ex-presidential bodyguard and a man whose pictures are rare to find anywhere. Wanyoike Thungu was not a trained police officer, but he is still the most feared presidential bodyguard in the history of Kenya. Wanyoike Thungu was Mze Jomo Kenyatta's head bodyguard and he was described by many as Kenya's most dangerous killer in the 1960s and 1970s. Known for shooting hundreds when Mze Jomo Kenyatta fell out with Jaramogi Oginga Odinga in Kisumu in 1969 and beating up a minister and his wife, Tungu is one of those men who got away with hideous abuse of power. He shot tens of people indiscriminately in Kisumu after an angry audience responded to Jomo Kenyatta's insults by throwing stones at him. As the president's motorcade left Kisumu, Sumu, Wanyoike and his squad of bodyguards continued shooting at roadside bystanders even as far as Ahero. His most notable work, however, is the torture and murder of J.M. Karioki in 1975, March 2nd. This man's story started in the mid-1940s when Mze Jomo Kenyatta returned from London. Thungu had been born in Ishaweri, Katondo, where Kenyatta settled on his return in 1946. With little education and more brawn than brain, Wanyoike Thungu worked in the youth wing of the Kenya Africa Union, KAU, which Kenyatta led. Due to his diligence and ability to follow orders of any kind, Kenyatta found Thongu and others to be of importance in the security operations of the party. When Kenyatta took over Kenyan leadership in 1963, some untrained former KAU militias like Wanyoike Thongu were conscripted into the presidential guard on Jomo Kenyatta's orders. Their inclusion into such a high-profile security detail raised questions amongst the top security chiefs, but none dared question Jomo Kenyatta's choices. Throughout the 60s, Thungu and his pseudo-military associates carried out all sorts of dirty assignments for President Jomo Kenyatta and his inner circle. By the time Kenyatta was president, these men lacked the education and age qualifications to be formally trained as presidential guard in Israel and Britain like other members of that guard. To compensate, Kenyatta had them secretly trained on gun handling in the Czech Republic in Europe. Trouble started when Thongu's squad of mercenaries started killing people in public over small disagreements. When one of them shot a patron in a Gatondo bar because they both wanted the same prostitute, Mze Jomo Kenyatta finally agreed to disband his unofficial guard. He did this on one condition only. He wanted Wanyoike Thongu to remain as his senior most presidential bodyguard. Thongu had earned Mze Jomo Kenyatta's trust not only because he came from Mze's home village, but also due to his blind willingness to follow orders. Thungu was made the head of Jomo Kenyatta's security detail, giving orders to much better trained officers than him. His first major display of violence was against one of President Kenyatta's biggest critics after independence, government minister Beldad Kagia. Kagia had been locked away in Kapenguria with Jomo Kenyatta and four others, popularly known as the Kapenguria Six, but he and the president disagreed on the issue of redistribution of land after independence. Beudad Kagia agreed with the politics of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, first vice president. Wanyoike Thongo paid the minister and his wife a visit one day as a surprise at the height of Kagia's opposition to Kenyatta. Accompanied by men armed with rongos and machetes, Thongo attacked Kagia and his wife and everybody was present, beating them senselessly to the point of both getting admitted in hospital. In a different instance, a mentally disturbed man rushed for Jomo Kenyatta's arrest seat at an Akuru function and Thongo was said to have shot the madman dead without second thought. After Tom Boyer's gruesome murder on Saturday of July 1969, a mystery group known as Kiambu Mafia was associated with the assassination. Amongst the men associated with this Kikuyu Mafioso included Wanyoike Thongo, Mbio Koinange, and Kenyatta's American-educated cousin, Dr. Ndroge Mungai. The group was associated with a wave of oath-taking in Mount Kenya, where young men took oaths of allegiance to the tribe, also referred to as House of Mobi. Wanyoike Thongo facilitated local tribal agitators from all over Mount Kenya to pay visits to President Kenyatta in Gatondo where they swore to fight against non-Kikuyu presidencies. For his good use, Mze Jomo Kenyatta had Wanyoike Thongo promoted to police inspector, a rank he wore with neither of the training. A story is told that at one function when President Jomo Kenyatta was inspecting a guard of honor, he saw a police superintendent who was more decorated than his personally tailored bodyguard Wanyoike Immediately, Mze had Thongo promoted to match that higher rank. 
Wanyoike Thongo immensely enjoyed his hangman role to hear his enemies and victims tell it. In 1975, he was heavily implicated in the murder of superstar politician J.M. Karioki. J.M. Karioki was interrogated by Wanyoike Thongo, Ben Gethi and others at Kingsley House in Nairobi and his body later dumped in a forest outside the city. Wanyoike is said to have knocked J.M. Karioki's teeth out before killing him on account of Karioki publicly criticizing President Kenyatta's hunger for land grabbing in the 60s. In this well-coordinated plot, Wanyoike Thongo held meetings in Nakuru with his accomplices to plan on how they would finish off J.M. Karioki. One meeting even happened at State House Nakuru and was arranged by Wanyoike Thongo while Kenyatta was indisposed in Gatondo. Wanyoike Thongo was so very used to grabbing land such that in one unverified story from Gatondo, a delegation of Mzedimo Kenyatta's neighbors came to ask him why he had sent Wanyoike Thongo, a young man enough to be their sons, to steal their land. Kenyatta was infuriated with his top dogs and warranted action and instructed that all all his age mates in Ishaweri village retained their land and half none of it grabbed until today. Wanyoike died in 1998, a rich but heavily guilty man, having faced no consequences whatsoever for his reign of terror. 